Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from AzureAutomation.com and welcome to another video of CodeCept.js and this time we are going to talk about CodeCept.js with Playwright Helper. So if you have seen my post like a couple of days before in LinkedIn, I was talking about the work in progress of the support of Playwright in CodeCept.js and the team really really are working hard to release this particular feature for us. And now it's official that CodeCept.js is really supporting Playwright as well as a part of the helpers that they have really got. So in this video, we are going to talk about CodeCept.js with Playwright Helper. So CodeCept.js released a new experimental Playwright support, which enables us to use the Playwright as one of the tool or the helper technically to be used within the CodeCept.js ecosystem, which is pretty awesome. So the tool is pretty responsive. They know what they're doing. They know that the new tools are really going to enable the testers community to do the job much easily. That's why the CodeCept team has released this tool pretty quickly while the Playwright is still in the experimental mode itself and the CodeCept.js has released their experimental feature to support the Playwright within them, which is pretty awesome. So if you just ask like what are the available helpers that the CodeCept.js by default support, these are the helpers CodeCept.js already support like WebDriver, Puppeteer, Playwright, Protractor, TestCafe, and for mobile testing, they support Appium and Detox. And similarly for API helpers, they have so many support and stuff. So you can see that CodeCept.js has got many different helpers and helpers is the core concept of CodeCept.js itself. Again, we'll talk a completely detailed explanation of what helper is and how helpers are really helping team to build the support of different ecosystems and stuff. That's going to be a different topic altogether. But in this video, we're just going to talk about the Playwright support with CodeJS. And again, if you ask the installation of how the Playwright tool is going to be, it's going to be something like this. Again, it's the same NPM I of Playwright. And we know that CodeCept.js, Playwright, Puppeteer, or Nightmare.js, everything is like JS-based kind of frameworks. So the installation is going to be pretty much exactly the same like how you are seeing in here. Let's quickly see everything in action and understand how things work. So for that, I'm going to flip to my Edge Chrome browser. But before that, I'm also going to tell you that the repository that we're going to use in this particular video is going to be the same CodeCept.js demo that we had in our weekend discussion. It is already there in our user automation repository. So you can just clone that. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to clone it and then I'm going to add a support helper for Playwright as well. And then we're going to start working from there. But as I said, let's get started. All right. So as you can see, this is the CodeCept.js release page. And now the course of JS in 2.5.0. And as I told you before, they have an experimental playwright helper introduced. And you can see that there is some information on here. And again, the author has clearly mentioned that playwright API itself is not stable until version 1.0 because the current version is 0 0.11.1. Uh, so you can see that it is not very stable enough uh, until 1.0, but still, both of them are an experimental feature. So whatever you use in here is going to change or maybe completely breaking change may happen. So let's see how it goes. Again, as I told you, if you just go into the code level of what's happening with the CodeCept.js over here for the helpers, you can see that they have a helper for Playwright.js and there is this particular coding. So again, as I told you before, we'll go through this helper in more detail in our upcoming videos of this particular uh, playlist but again that's going to be a completely different topic altogether more technical but today we're just going to talk only about the course js with playwright all right so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go to the github of execute automation as i told you before the repository of this course js is already available within in here so you can just go to this particular uh, repository uh, and again this is the uh helper video that we talked on the puppeteer and today we're going to talk about playwright so i'm just going to clone this guy and i'm going to make this thing available within my uh, machine so i have already uh, cloned it and you can see in over here uh, i have just checked it out and i'm going to show this in explorer and then i'm going to open the visual studio code and once you open the visual studio code just navigate to the terminal so that you can just play around with it now all i'm going to do is i'm just going to do an npm install but before that 
let me just go to the uh, package.json file in here and if you can see in here the dev dependency we have is for the puppeteer but not for the playwright yet so i'm just going to add the playwright support as well so playwright uh, like this and this is the latest version as i told you this is the 0.11.1 version which is currently being supported by Codesep js team as well Right, so this is the only thing which I'm going to do, and let me just remove this uh, package.log.json file. I don't know how it, that really went inside uh, the GitHub repo. I could probably change that, and I'm going to do the npm install. So once I do that, it is going to install both Puppeteer and Playwright. So don't worry about it. We are going to change the code a little bit, uh, and I will also show what happens if the code runs without Puppeteers and stuff. You can see that the download is currently happening. And that's it. You can see that the whole installation of our packages are completely done right now. And I'm just going to go to the login and play around underscore test for the existing code that we just saw before uh, using Puppeteer. So this code actually runs with Puppeteer and the one which we're going to run today is going to be with from the playwright. So again, if you ask me like, what is the difference? Like how can we really differentiate both of them? And if you have seen my earlier video on Codecept.js in the weekend video series, we just added what is called as a Codecept config.js file where the helper currently is actually the puppeteer over here, right? So this is the puppeteer code guys. So we are gonna change this to playwright and make sure that the code actually works without any problem. So I'm just gonna save this guy right now. Uh, and I'm just gonna run with the puppeteer helper library and we'll see what's really gonna happen. So I'm just gonna do a clear. Uh, and then in order to run this, we're going to do this npx codecept.js run hyphen hyphen stop. This is the one that we followed to run the code. Let's see what's going to happen. So you can see that it opens the browser. And it completes the test without any problem, which is pretty awesome. And now what we're going to do is instead of using the helper of Puppeteer, I'm just going to change this to Playwright. I'm going to save this and you can see that I have not even changed a single line of code in the way that it's been identifying stuffs. It's going to be pretty much exactly the same thing. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the helper here from puppeteer to playwright and then I'm just going to hit enter and you can see that it opened the browser and it is running the playwright test guys. Pretty awesome, right? So if you don't believe me what I'm saying, if I just go back to the uh, package.json file in here and if I just get rid of this puppeteer completely I'm just going to run the test just with the playwright this time and what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to delete the node underscore module completely and if I also delete the package.log file and now if I try to install it so let's see what's happening with the node underscore module folder it seems like it is taking some time to delete it so if I go back here and if I delete this permanently, all right, it's gone. Uh, and now if I try to do an NPM install, so you can see this time we're not going to install with the uh, Puppeteer. We're going to install actually with the Playwright and we're going to run the test and see how it's actually going to work. All right, so it's done. And now I'm just going to run the test again, just with Playwright this time. And you can see that the code is going to execute as you expect. And if I change the helper this time from the playwright to puppeteer, and if I save this, and if I try to run this particular code, you can see that you will actually get an error. It says that the helper puppeteer is not available, so you need to install. So this proves the point that the experimental feature of the playwright is actually working without any problem, which is pretty cool. And this way we can also see that the Codecept.js is going to introduce all the same feature which was there before in Puppeteer for Playwright as well. So for instance, if I just go over here, so these are the code that we already discussed just to add some more code. So if I want to check, if I run this particular code, I want to see the title uh, is going to be equal to execute automation or something like that. So I know that this particular application has the exit automation as the title. I can just do that over here and let me change the 
helper to playwright. I'll save this. And if I run this guy, and you can see that the test got passed and the title is equal to exit automation. Pretty cool. It's exactly the same thing that you can do with Puppeteer available in Playwright as well. And similarly, you can do some other stuff like hooks and stuff. Again, guys, that's going to be something more which we need to be discussing. We have not discussed anything uh, for this particular uh, Codesept.js. I should probably uh, create a separate series on how to work with annotations, how to work with scenarios, and how to work with different kind of assertions. And you can see that the one that I showed you before, like IC, is like more like an assertion, which is mainly used for checking if that particular value exists or not. So there are many different assertions available. Similarly, you can get a value using I dot grab option to get all the values out from the UIs and stuff. So we'll be talking about all these stuffs along with the helpers in our upcoming days of this particular series. But again, that's kind of very, very interesting with it. So I'm just going to navigate to page over here and I can just put something like this and I can paste this over here. So this way it's just going to uh, navigate to the page and it's going to exactly do the same operation. Oops, it's failing. Uh, sorry about that. So the code base is going to be pretty much exactly the same thing, just that we have changed the helper and it's working fine without any problem. So all I have did is like I forgot to pass this parameter of i because it won't actually get that particular uh, instance of the playwright. So let's see how it works this time. Oops. There you go. So it just works without any problem. So we don't have to pass any parameter there. And again, yes. So this is how it all works with the playwright and CodeSafeJS without any problem. So once again, Thank you very much for watching this video and stay tuned for more videos coming on Codesept.js along with Puppeteer and Playwright and Nightmare.js and stuff. Thank you.